Language is such a fundamental part of early childhood and the development of language and hearing language. It's really a building block for uh, social and cognitive development. If you measure children's vocabulary when they get to kindergarten, so how many words they know, it's super predictive of like their reading skills later on in fourth grade, for example. And so we have these huge achievement gaps by socioeconomic status in reading. That's a problem because it means that as a society, we're not giving all children an equal footing to start with um, as they're coming into public schooling. I was really excited to see the LSX announcement when it came out. The brief was, we want to cross collaborate with people and combine art forms um, with science. I was like, that brilliant, brilliant. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm interested in. And how exciting would it be to work with and people from different worlds and different fields to make the work that I'm doing even even more interesting and have more of a, a background to it and be more accessible. I was really drawn to areas of research surrounding poverty and how it impacts children. That tied directly to this big project I've been working on in the criminal justice system. And one of the scientists in the group, Meredith, her work was all about the word gap. So the word gap is the fact that children from higher socioeconomic backgrounds are exposed to many more words during early childhood than children from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, basically at home. But the important piece of it that we know now is that it's not so much the gap in quantity that matters, but it's the gap in quality. So having those sort of really high quality conversations with the children is what we're finding is more important. To the point that early childhood can really make a difference for a person throughout their whole life, um, one of the things that we try to emphasize uh, around policies is also that, yes, that's the case, but it needs to be something that's a sustained investment and not equivalent to an inoculation. That, you know, we need to have strong transitions into primary school as well then and uh, continued opportunities for all children. This may sound cheesy, but it really was a true collaborative idea. I don't know at which point it came up, but as soon as it did, we all kind of jumped on it. We're like, someone might have said, let's make a PSA. Let's, oh, we could do that in animation. Oh, I could write the script. Or uh, I, like, we all kind of jumped to it and saw that this is an idea we can action well with our contacts. And we really believed in it. And I think that was the key thing. We believed in the message. We knew we could communicate it across and we knew we could make something beautiful. So very early on in the brainstorming of the animation, we thought, what better way to get this across by having a child read it. But we wanted it to feel very much child-centered, so that the voice was coming from the child of, you know, talk with me, that's all you need to do, let's have a chat together, let's hang out. And um, Rather than being told, I think there's a lot of, sometimes parents feel that they're being lectured to, or they're being told to do this. In order to get a healthy child, you should be doing this. And we really wanted to avoid that. We wanted to say, look, it's quite, you know, it should be enjoyable. It's, an, it's a natural thing. When we envisaged how it would look, we did have some initial ideas. We wanted something quite simplistic. Um, but the benefit of working in this field already is I have a few animators that I've worked with before who I trust. I don't only really trust them to produce really visually stunning pieces, I trust them to take the concept of the science I'm working with and translate it into the best ideas possible. And then we all loved the visuals that came back and we ran with it. And then my daughter Saya was the, the voice in the piece, which was actually really lovely. Um, it was done as a bit of a, a, let's just see how this sounds and everyone seemed to like her uh, voice, which was really nice for her, and it's been brilliant for her to see it all come together as well. One thing I've learned just through doing small research studies, parents who do know more about child development and about you know what kids are capable and about interacting with children, do then ultimately sort of interact with them in ways that promote learning. So there is something very much to be said for just getting information out there in an accessible way so that if parents want to access it, they can. I'm really grateful for the fellowship and the opportunity to engage with this incredible group of people. It's just been a really great experience for me personally to work with such a diverse group of people and learn a lot about different industries. I mean, I still have a lot to learn, but it's been a, it's been a great experience for sure.
Do you know how much my brain is growing every day? As soon as I am born, before I can even talk, I hear what you're saying and it's helping my brain. It's actually lighting up in so many different places, all at once. What's really amazing is that there's a way to make my brain go even more, and we can all do it. It's very simple, and lots of fun. It's a bit like sharing. It's all about taking turns and talking about lots of little things, or even big things, like what does it weigh? Or how do flowers go? You can also talk to me when we play together and ask me things like, do you like dinosaurs? Or can you see the moon tonight? I also love it when you sing and read to me. It makes my brain light up everywhere. Try it. How's your day today? Talk with me.